The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is home to many mysteries and terrifying sightings. In today's video, we're going to be going over five terrifying eyewitness encounter and experiences dealing with the supernatural and the unknown. But before we get into today's stories, be sure to go ahead and smack the heck out of that subscribe button because I release storytelling of the mysterious and supernatural seven days a week. Let's do it. This first story is submitted by Dylan. In August of 2011, Dylan was working as a seasonal employee park ranger at the Deep Creek Campground in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It was right around midnight when he had left to drive back to his home on the other side of the park. He had taken this route many times before, and it is usually very dark with only sparse lighting. On this night, however, the moon was out and very full, and so visibility was much better than usual. As he's driving down a road, Deep Creek Road, which takes you south down into Bryson City, something had caught his eye up ahead near some trees on the side of the road by an old picnic table that has since been removed due to age and rot. At first, Dylan thought it might be a bear because there are black bear all over the south, but then he realized how oddly shaped it was compared to that of a normal black bear, especially standing upright, like this one did. What he estimated was a creature that stood about seven to eight feet tall with what appeared to be long flowing black hair covering its entire body except for its face, which appeared more human-like than anything else although it was hard to tell from the angle he was at and the lighting conditions he was in. Its arms were not as large as you would expect from an animal of this size, but instead more thin and lankier with very long bony fingers. Dylan only saw it for about 10 seconds as he continued driving, but that was enough time to give him a very eerie feeling in the pit of his stomach and make him wonder exactly what he had just seen. As soon as he got home, he tells his wife about what had happened, and at first, like usual, she seemed very skeptical, until he went on to describe exactly what he had seen in more detail. And although she didn't mention Bigfoot or Sasquatch because she doesn't really know much about them, she thought that it was very possible that that's what it could have been. And for a long time, Dylan had a really hard time accepting this and processing this experience, until he got to talk to some other persons working in the park about some similar sightings. One of the staff, specifically to whom he became very close with while they worked, detailed several sightings that she had had while working within the park herself. This really opened Dylan's eyes to the fact that this area is probably more active with these kind of creatures more than he had ever imagined. He has since then become a believer and is convinced that whatever he saw was most likely a Sasquatch of some kind. Now, the first sighting his coworker had described to him was back in 1997 at the Deep Creek area, where she too saw a large bipedal creature moving across the road in front of her vehicle while she was driving. Since then, she has also had several other sightings within the park and along nearby roads. Both the areas are very close to one another, as well as the sighting location that Dylan had which makes him feel even more certain that this is a hot spot for these creatures in the area. But the creature he saw, unlike his coworker, was not as big and bulky, and although tall, more thin and slender. The creature in which she had seen, she described it as more apish looking, while the one he had seen, although more slender and tiny, seemed more human in appearance. Both Dylan and his co-worker have seen a multitude of black bears in the area many times before. Dylan describes not hearing any sounds as this thing moved across the road in front of him, but also described that the engine kind of drowned out any other noise along with the radio, but said that this putrid odor filled up the cabin of his vehicle. It was a putrid odor of rotting meat and urine, as Dylan described it. And similar to his coworker, who had had another encounter with one of these things in 2005 when she too was driving down a similar road during the summer and the early evening hours. She saw a large upright creature, like the previous creature she had seen and what Dylan had seen, upright standing on hind legs next to the road near a tree. She described this one as being around 8 feet tall, gray, large head, shoulders, long arms, and virtually no neck. Unlike the first one, she said this one's build was much larger, 
And while she actually suspects the first creature she saw to be a female, judging by its shape and figure, this one was obviously a male, judging by its muscle definition and its overall shape of body. Unlike the first encounter, this one seemed to act aggressively towards her, and she said that it actually took a few steps toward her car as if it was getting ready to do a bluff charge. She described it as very intense, very frightening, and very aggressive. In the time since then, Dylan had heard of other sightings in and around the area, but couldn't recall any off the top of his head. There is also Native American tribe reservations nearby, not too far, and they've also reported sightings in that area as well and each tribe has many stories of their own. In fact, they might be the best persons to go to for stories just like this one. So what do you think? Did Dylan and his coworker truly see something out of this world, or is this simply three misidentifications of a black bear? I'll let you decide. Our next story comes from Kevin. Now, before he details his own experience with the unknown, he wished to keep his name private. So we'll call him Kevin for the story. In 2015, Kevin worked as a park ranger in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park for about seven months during the spring and summertime. If you don't know much about this park, it's a very large area with many different sections. Gorgeous, gorgeous park filled with many different types of trees and plants and plenty of wildlife to go around. And Kevin had worked in one of these smaller sections right around Cades Cove, actually. It's a very popular area for tourists and hikers, and he worked in the visitor center, which is located along a small mountain road. The area has plenty of hiking trails, cabins, and campgrounds abound. The area can also be secluded with thick trees, shrubbery, and bushes. There are plenty of small roads that lead to dead ends or small hidden cabins. The area is very beautiful, but also has a dark side that Kevin assures not too many people know about. It's home to plenty of black bears and other wildlife, and it's not too uncommon to hear of hikers or tourists having run-ins with large black bears, but most just ignore them. He's also heard stories from other rangers and visitors who have had run-ins with strange creatures. However, what he had encountered this evening in the spring was in fact no bear. He still has no explanation for what it was. He was working in the evening shift, which is always very slow. It's a good time to relax and listen to music while you take in the views of the mountains and trees. One of his favorite times to work was during this evening because it was so peaceful and quiet. And on this particular night, he had decided to take a walk down one of the smaller roads to clear his head, listening to the sounds of the nightlife while taking in the fresh air and sights around him. It's during these moments that Kevin always felt at peace. As he was walking down the road, taking in everything around him, his peaceful walk was suddenly interrupted by this loud growling noise coming from the bushes next to him. He stops, looks around, but could not see what was making the noise. However, what it sounded like was big enough to devour him whole, he claims. So he slowly backs away from the bushes while keeping his eyes on them, and as he did so, something flies up out of the thicket near up in a tree. And what his eyes looked at appeared to be a giant bat of some kind. However, once perched, it looked down on him with these hideous glowing eyes and a beak face. He's never felt such evil overcome his entire being. This thing was not of this world, he claims. Kevin says that this was around five feet tall, covered in dark brown gangly matted fur with a wingspan of around eight to 10 feet. The face looked like that of a bat or a pterosaur of some kind, but far more demonic with a long curved beak. Its eyes were glowing yellow and it had a hideous beak like a mouth. It simply sat there and watched him with this evil grin shown on its face. Kevin, surprised and unsure what to do next, slowly backs away from the creature while keeping his eyes locked onto it. It was as if something was taunting it to come closer. He doesn't know how long this encounter lasted for because when you're in the throes of it, time slows down to a halt. But once he had created enough distance between him and this creature, it simply vanished into the trees and was gone just like that. And once he knows it's clear, he runs back to the visitor center, trying his best to keep a professional composure, which wasn't exactly easy. He tells his coworkers about what happened, but they all laugh at him and think he's crazy. He still doesn't know to this day what it was that was out there or where it had come from. And it's still hands down one of the most terrifying moments in his life, and he will never forget it. Since then, he's tried to do research during his time and has not been able to come to any rational or logical conclusions as to what this could be. 
simply because there are a myriad of species of bats living within Tennessee, but what he saw was no ordinary bat. This thing was easily the size of a small child, maybe 8 to 10 years old. I mean, he's talking humongous, possibly even the size of a condor, if not a little larger. But this was no condor. This thing, as he described, looked more like a pterosaur from hell than anything else. In fact, the only thing that was bat-like about it was its wings and how they appeared to be all tattered and leathery. He stated that he has seen plenty of bats in his life, so he knows what they look like. But this was no bat. Spencer and his girlfriend at the time went for a lovely hike slash camping trip in the Lind Camp Falls area in the Great Smoky Mountain National Forest. It is a long, narrow valley with a stream running down the center. On either side of the stream are thickly wooded hillsides that rise sharply to meet the ridgeline. The park boundary is at the far end of the valley, where the stream exits via a small cascade. There are several picnic areas along both sides of the stream, with a few small hiking trails that lead into the woods. On this particular night, they had pitched their tent in an unoccupied picnic area on the west side of the stream, or the most remote area in this section. It was right around 10.05 p.m., and they had just finished dinner when they had heard the first howl. Spencer will never forget it as long as he lives. It was this long, mournful wail that seemed to come from all directions at once. It was unlike anything Spencer and his girlfriend at the time had ever heard before. The howl seemed to resonate in his chest, and he could feel the vibrations, the deep bass tones in his chest, more so in his body than his ears, if that makes any sense. His girlfriend at the time looks at him and says, We need to go in the tent, and a voice that instructed him that she was scared to death. And so trying to comfort her, they did so immediately. The howl sounded like it was too loud for any animal they'd ever heard. It had the same quality as if you had heard an amplified sound of a human voice through a bullhorn. The howl seemed to be right outside the tent, but Spencer nor his girlfriend could identify the source. It was too loud and deep to simply be a coyote, and they'd never heard anything like it before or since. That night is when they had heard something heavy moving around outside their tent. His girlfriend at the time began to panic, thinking it was a large black bear, but Spencer had assured her that bears don't sound like that. He went outside with a flashlight and found no tracks around his tent, but he could still hear it moving around in the brush nearby. Whatever it was, it knew that they were there and seemed to be playing with Spencer and his girlfriend, kind of the way a predator does. Then the smell hit Spencer and he described this as an odor of rotting flesh and sulfur. It was the foulest, putrid smell he has ever encountered. He says it was so bad that it burned his nostrils and made him gag. The odor seemed to be the strongest right outside the tent on the east side, but he couldn't identify where the source was coming from. It was too foul to be a dead animal and too strong for anything that size. Spencer admits, though, in that moment, he was feeling pretty brave with his Glock 19 and a bullet chambered ready to go. As he shone his light around, looking for any signs of anything, his light illuminated a large shadow just off in the brush from him. And once the flashlight spilled on it, it immediately jumped up and turned to look in his direction, as if he had startled something and it had been exposed. And he kid you not, he instantly dove for the tent out of reaction from his own body, like he knows that whatever this was wasn't a human and he had to escape. He climbs back in the tent with his girlfriend looking at him like he's crazy and he did not tell her what he saw because he didn't want her to be any more scared than she already was. He was now terrified. He had the tent zipped up, his hand still on his Glock and his flashlight waiting for what was to happen next. Everything around went quiet, including the crickets and all night sounds. And all they could hear is the sound of something really big and heavy moving around in the brush all around their tent. And this went on for hours afterwards, but eventually it left and never came back. Spencer has gone on to tell me that he's had other weird experiences in the woods, but this one still stands out as the most bizarre and terrifying. Whatever it was, it knew they were there and seemed to be playing with them. That's what he got out of it. Spencer and his girlfriend at the time did not hear it again, but they were both too scared to sleep. And once daylight had broke the following morning, they packed up and left as soon as they could. They did not return to the park for several years after. They still have the tent and all the gear from that trip, but they'll never forget this one. And the smell, the smell, Spencer says, will haunt him forever. Not even roadkill during a hot, humid Tennessee summer will match that odor. Trenton's story is a bit disturbing. 
Back when Trenton was a teenager, his house backed onto a quiet private section that nearly bordered the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. He thinks technically they actually lived within the park's boundaries, but don't quote him on that one. One day, when he was a teenager, him and his brother went off on an adventure in the woods. They were armed with a few BB guns and some snacks. They didn't go too far into the woods, maybe about a mile or so at most, and it took them a while to get in there because they didn't have the proper hiking boots and the brush was really thick and it was really hot and humid. So they just had some old tennis shoes and jeans on and tank tops. The terrain was pretty rough, Trenton describes, and they had to climb over fallen trees and crawl under others, and it was a pretty fun adventure for the time being. And they remembered that they were walking along this creek bed when they came to a small clearing. Sweaty, exhausted, and thirsty, they decided that they would use this opportunity to rest. And in fact, in the center of this very clearing was a large rock that seemed to jut out of the ground, maybe by about four or so feet high. This was the perfect spot to sit, eat lunch, drink water, and kind of refuel for the next part of the day and adventure. So while they're sitting there eating, Trenton's brother and them both notice this strange mechanical humming sound. In fact, Trenton tells me that it reminded him at the time of somebody running a shop vac, except they're in the middle of the deep woods, not a soul around. But it sounded like it was coming from all around them and not in one specific direction far off. Trenton remembers his brother also being very confused by this and assuring him that he too was hearing it. And so they're looking around in confusion at the source of this noise but could not find it. And as they're looking around, Trenton notices this knot in his stomach beginning to form. And suddenly, he loses his appetite and this overwhelming feeling of dread just kind of creeps over him like a tidal wave about to crash down on a surfer. It was at this point, Trenton admits that he was kind of lost in his own discomfort for a moment, feeling unwell as if a flu or fever had come over him. Very strange and so sudden like nothing he'd ever experienced before. And right then, both him and his brother heard what sounded like an explosion. But once again, it sounded omnipresent, like it was coming from everywhere at once and not in one particular direction or spot. He said it reminded him of a sci-fi sound effect of an explosion. And he also referenced the show Stargate SG-1 from the Sci-Fi Channel. And that it reminded him of a sound effect or sound bite that would be used on that specific show because it sounded so weird and not like a typical explosion. And as he began looking around with his brother for the source of this strange explosion, he notices his brother is now nervously glancing over his shoulder. And so he asks him what's wrong, and his brother says he thought he saw movement in his bushes to the right, that he didn't want, assuming it was a cougar, to sneak up on them. And so now both boys are listening for a while, and as they're listening intently for movement, they notice that the humming had completely ceased, all other forms of noise had completely died. Whereas before, the forest was alive with noise and birds chirping and just the noise that comes with being in a forest during the daytime. All they could feel in here was the wind. And that's when they saw something moving in the bushes directly behind them now and no longer to the right. It was roughly about 15 feet away. Both boys turned to see what it was and all they could see is these two very bright red eyes staring back at them. They seemed to almost glow for a moment. And when they looked back, the eyes were then gone. Instantly creeped out and done with the day's adventure, they quickly packed up their lunch and started in the direction to head back home. Now, about 10 or so minutes into the walk, or should we say mild jog, both boys had heard something coming up from behind them very quickly. They turned around and saw what they would describe as a dark figure, they thought it was a person, but it was all black, moving, not walking, but moving through the woods towards them very quickly. It was still too far away to make out any specific details, but it was clearly walking on two legs toward them. And the motion was wrong, like it glided through the trees and brush without making a single noise. Whereas they're stepping on stuff and making crunching noises, and they're pretty scared by this point. So now their semi-jog turns into a full-on sprint back towards home. And they looked back a few times and saw that whatever it was was gaining on them getting closer and it seemed to be gliding through the trees and the brush with ease. They don't know how, but it was keeping up with them and getting closer the more they looked back. Once they made it back to their house, they ran through the yard, run inside, lock the door, and they didn't want to tell their parents because they thought that their parents would beat them for making up ridiculous stories. Both boys look out the back window, 
and they could see this form of a dark figure almost kind of swaying standing in the wood line. And it was just standing there swaying, looking in the direction of the house. And they watched it for a while, but it never moved beyond that or ever made a single noise. And after a while, both boys could not sit anymore. It had just evaporated into the air. It's safe to say that after that, they never went into those woods again. Our last story is submitted by Glenn. And in the fall of 2019, in Spruce Flats Falls, which is a rocky hiking area around a forested mountain creek, including a waterfall with a swimming hole, he was hiking with his dog and a friend who was also an experienced hiker. They were on the Spruce Flats Falls Trail about a quarter mile from the road. They have hiked that trail many times and know it well. There's a creek crossing about a quarter mile from the upper Tremont Road. The trail crosses the creek and then follows it up the hill for a bit. They were on this section of the trail when they noticed something. They walked around the edges of the trees and they started noticing a sort of electrical charge to the very air around them. Almost like the kind of feel when you approach a large electrical substation or a charged active radio antenna. Glenn has experience working in radio and electronics for a lot of his life and so they both knew what it was. They both felt this strange electrical charge but it was strongest around the trees in the creek. They also noticed a very pungent, almost rotten egg smell. This wasn't the first time that they had noticed this odor in the forest before. It was a very distinctive smell. They had also noticed that the birds and insects were completely silent. No chirping, crickets, or frogs. Glenn's friend and him looked at each other and said, something's not right here. In a non-silent agreement of facial expressions, they continued to walk up the trail, but very slowly, almost as if they were anticipating something to happen or like they were wading through water. They felt as if their movements were somehow being slowed down and even their dog was still and unusually quiet, almost frozen or slowed in pace. They kept looking around ahead of them when they noticed that the trees were swaying now as if a wind was blowing them, but there was no breeze and they could see no cause for the strange movement. As they got closer, they noticed the source of the electrical charge and smell and noticed movement in the trees above them as if something he described as camouflage was moving up to the trees, going down, jumping into the river. They stopped moving and looked up into some very large trees. The limbs were large and they could see that they were not moving, but something was shaking them, that it was almost like a flash of something big moving from tree limb to tree limb, shaking the trees, and that it darted down into the creek. At that point, they had both had enough and decided to head back down the trail. They took their time and as they got closer to the creek, they noticed there was now something in the water that wasn't there before. It was partially obscured by some rocks, but what they saw was this translucent thing floating in the water. It was roughly about four or five feet long and had a very distinct long shape to it. Glenn and friend have seen many animals in the wild, including bears, but this was nothing like a bear or any animal they had seen before. It appeared to have a head, but was not distinctive enough to tell what it was. It kind of appeared to be a body that was tapered into the head, and they could not really make out a color since it appeared to be semi-translucent, but it kind of appeared as if it had scaly skin or something on top of its body. Then it began to turn in color and became very dark, and slowly it began to erect itself out of the water and grow darker and more firm in color. And Glenn knows this sounds crazy, but he swears that it resembles a mantis being of some kind and recalls it being very tall and skinny. It had arms that seemed to have a slight elbow to him, but more looked like the front legs of a praying mantis. They were very long and it was still partially submerged in the water. Immediately, his fight or flight kicked in, but he was frozen in place. Its head, now almost what he would describe as taking formation, began to look at both him and his friend and it stayed perfectly still in the water but that its arms began to sway back and forth very slowly, and he could not look away from it, and him and his friend were frozen. This thing had now fully erected itself out of the water and was staring at Glenn and his friend, inspecting them almost like a cat would a mouse that it's about to eat. Immediately, his muscles felt numb and tense and this electrical whirring feeling buzzing all around his body. Whatever it was had temporarily disabled his muscle movement somehow, he felt like he was going to vomit and became extremely dizzy and lightheaded. He could not move and his friend described the same thing. And it slowly began to move up out of the water, swaying its arms back and forth. And now he could see the front arms were very long, but they had a slight bow in them. It was now very dark in color, 
almost black. He could see no mouth, but had bulging golden eyes and was clearly looking in their direction. Its head stayed still, but the body was slowly moving forward, like it was almost changing shape as it moved in a very slow motion. He said that it reminded him of a camera recording in 120 frames per second, where it's very slow, fluid motion. And the more he looked at it, the more he described it looking like a mantis. And as it began to drift towards them, it slowly became translucent again to the point of fading into nothing as it approached them. And as soon as it had become fully translucent again, the electrical whirring around the body had stopped altogether and both Glenn and his friend could move again. So they turned and ran all the way back to the car and they have never felt that kind of fear like that in their lives. They have both seen many animals in the wild and this was not any animal that is known to man. It looked hideous, and he believes this thing was either cloaking or doing something like that. He has also seen UFOs and believes that this was some kind of mantis being, but is not sure what it was doing there, but that it seemed very interested in Glenn and his friend, but he does not know why. It did not seem or come off aggressive to him, just very curious and almost like it was studying him. He knows that this area is also a hot spot for cryptid activity, paranormal activity, and Bigfoot activity and wonders if there is a connection between them. Glenn is a very experienced outdoorsman and hunter, and he knows the woods, mountains, and animals like no other person that he knows besides a couple of his friends. But this one has Glenn stumped. He has seen a lot of the things in the wild, but this has left him with more questions and no answers. So what did you guys think of today's episode? Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think. Are these all true terrifying accounts of real things or are all these accounts merely works of fiction? And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to slap that like button and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below to make sure that you never miss a single episode I release every single day, Monday through Sunday. As always guys, keep an open mind. I love you all and I'll see you guys in the very next episode.